Islam's position against extremism. I wish we would like to clarify to everyone the clear directives that Islam has regarding dealing with society in a way that is just and that it has nothing to do with the ways of the terrorists. And the terrorists, they come with many names, they're criminals that come with the names that in the midst of what we are used to hearing these days, ISIS, Boko Haram, Al-Qaeda, Al-Qaeda, and many others that we're familiar with, individuals like Bin Laden and other than him. But the ideology is one ideology. And that's what we want to make clear that Islam is opposed to that and utterly condemns that. And from those who we, by the grace of Allah, are able to get to help clarify the position is to the left of me, uh, our dear, beloved brother, Abu Muhammad al maghribi who has come to us by way of Stone Mountain, uh, which is a city in the, in the greater Atlanta area, in Georgia. And <clears throat> he is uh, from the Imams at Masjid Tawheed. And he will begin our seminar for this program on this topic. And the itinerary will be that after Abu Muhammad's lecture, we will have a live video stream. And after the video stream, which will be approximately uh, after Duhr, so we will break at 1.45, at 1.45 until 2.15. And then 2.15 we'll have our next lecture, which will be by way of video stream uh, from one of the uh, Imams there in Birmingham, UK. After that, we'll have a Q&A session, which will be at 3.30. will be a Q&A session. So we'll try to take some questions at the end of some of the lectures, but if you don't get your questions in, then uh, you know, be, be sure that we'll accommodate you at some point, especially during this Q&A session, so that you can get your questions uh, in. Now, after the Q&A section, we will have uh, another lecture by Abu Khadija, and then we'll have lunch. It will be actually a late lunch, so it'll be like more like an early dinner, actually. So we'll have an early dinner, and that will be at, right after Salat al-Asr. So by 5.30, which will be uh, the beginning of our early dinner, we should go on until about 7.00. And then the lectures will continue from that point on up until the end of this uh, program, which will be at 9 p.m. with some short breaks. So that's just a quick summary of what to expect for this day. Uh, and so without further ado, uh, I present to you Abu Muhammad. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> It's a pleasure to welcome all of you once again. I welcome uh, our audience, our uh, guests to come here and uh, to listen to what we have to present as related to this uh, famous topic these days, famous all over, uh, what ISIS are doing. And uh, of course, ISIS, uh, they look Muslims, they say they're Muslims, uh, they mention the name of Allah a lot, especially when they commit their evil acts. Usually you hear them say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, or you hear them say, Muhammad, 
you hear them Islam, you hear them saying this and jihad. And these are things actually that uh, are propagated and spread on the internet and on the media and on many things. But uh, we as Muslims, we know those amongst us who they study Islam and take it from its proper sources, we know that what ISIS are doing or ISIL in Arabic they call them Daesh, their actions has nothing to do with Islam. Islam is free from their horrendous uh, acts of terrorism and their brutality and the like. Even though they try themselves to whatever they do, they do it in the name of Allah, the name of Islam, the name of Jihad. So it is incumbent upon us Muslims to clarify these matters and to present the people with the truth. Because look, as we live in America, we don't live in Saudi Arabia. Even those who live in Saudi Arabia is still upon them to clarify these matters to Muslims themselves because this ISIS and Al-Qaeda and all of them, as you heard, Boko Haram, the Shabab in Somalia and Kenya, they use Muslims. Now they have forces with them by recruiting Muslims. How can a Muslim, this is the main question, how can a Muslim do things like this? Actions, beheading, burning alive people, killing of innocents, men, women, children, school blowing up buses, uh, buildings, hijacking planes, and you know what that brings, it kills a lot of people and injured so many others. And those who are not injured and not killed, they're left in fear and in terror. That's the propaganda they play on. So it's very important for us to clarify these matters. And that's why we thank the community here in the ICPB for organ organizing the like of this event to shed the lights on this very dangerous and wicked yet wicked and misguided sect and a group of people who they use the Islam as an umbrella and to perpetrate these crimes against humanity and they do it in the name of Allah whereas Allah is free from their actions they use the name of Islam whereas Islam condemn, not condone their actions. Islam is a, is, a, is a religion of peace. That's the name of Islam. Uh, we have some pamphlets, alhamdulillah, out there that will give you even more thorough and details on some of the points that we're going to highlight. Islam, uh, first of all, of course, uh, anything we say, it may, it may qualify itself to be a lecture, but we're going to try our best to summarize. So Islam, we want to, to the non-Muslims to understand that Islam is a religion from God, Allah. And since He alone created the universe, created the heavens and the earth, and He created us, the human being, and He bestowed upon us endless bounties from the fresh air we breathe, the fresh water we drink, the varieties of food we enjoy, the intellect, the sound mind, the vision, the hearing. And he wants one thing from us, to recognize him and to praise him and to thank him for his bounties and his blessings. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sent messengers from Noah, Nuh, he was the first messenger, then Abraham, then Solomon, David, Moses, Aaron, Jacob, Joseph, then Jesus, Isa, the son of Mary, and then the last of them is Muhammad, the prophet Muhammad. All of them, they have one message. They were sent with the message of Islam, which 
simply say worship one God, one true God, since He alone creates. He didn't have no partner in anything. He alone creates and He provides and maintains. So normally He should be alone uh, to be the only one to, to be worshipped. Islam is a religion that protects the most important things in the life of the human being. Their blood first. It is not permissible to shed the blood of people, innocent people, like this ISIS now are doing. ISIS, by the way, we want you to understand, they don't target uh, only non-Muslims. Actually, they kill more Muslims than non-Muslims. ISIS. They kill more Muslims. Even those people, and you see that they, they put it on their clips. Some people say, I'm a Muslim. And they're like, what, you're not with us? So, unless a person is on the same false ideology they are upon, otherwise, they don't recognize the hurma, the sanctity of the people that Islam gives to the people. Islam, it protects the people as related to their blood, as related to their honor. It's not permissible to backbite, to slander, to cheat, to deceive others. Likewise, Islam protects the religion and protects the wealth. The wealth of the people are sacred. You cannot just go ahead and take people's property with no rights. So stealing, deception, transgression, oppression are forbidden in Islam, this beautiful religion of Islam. And likewise, fifthly, al-aql. These are the most important things for us in our lives. Your religion, your belief, that's important for you. Your intellect is important because without intellect, you know what, what can we be, what we can be. Likewise, number three, your honor, that's important for you. And number four, your life is important. And number five, your wealth. And whatever you work hard for, no one has the right to uh, take it away from you. So therefore, for example, we take one side, we, the, the blood, because uh, Isis, uh, which they call them also ISO, and this is the abbreviation of four words. I stands for uh, Islamic. S, state. I, Iraq, and S, Syria or Shem. So ISIS is an abbreviation of the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria or Shem. That's where they started now. And of course they want to expand, but we, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to destroy them and to stop their evil. But we tried. If we cannot fight them physically, then we have to fight the ideology. That's more important to fight the ideology. Because now they recruit, especially in our times. In our times. They don't have to come to America to recruit our youth, our teenagers. Boys or girls, unfortunately even girls now are going there. From what we hear from the media. They're doing it through the internet. You don't know that person who's sending those messages and recruiting the youth. You don't know where they are. That's why it's very important for us to fight the ideology of these people, the ISIS or ISO. In Arabic, they call them Daesh. Al-Dawla al-Islamiyya fi al-Iraq wa sham And of course, now the highlight is focused on them, but there is. Don't forget about Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda of Bin Laden and the Zawahiri and them. And don't forget about the Nusra and Boko Haram in Af Africa along with the Shabab of Somalia and in Kenya and the like. And whoever is on the same page with them and whoever support them. So we have to be aware of this as Muslims. And we want to relay this message to the Muslims first. 